Okay, so basically in this problem, the first thing you should notice in this problem is that each of the answer choices has variables in them. So whenever that's the case, you pretty much have two different routes to, uh, at least two different ways to solve the problem. One is you could just do the algebra, or two, you can basically pick numbers for these variables, figure out what the solution is, and then plug in what you've picked in and see whether that matches. So if the algebra looks easy to you, you should just do the algebra. This problem though, the algebra is not easy. So um, basically, here's what's going on in the problem. So uh, there's a newsstand, it's selling copies of newspaper A for a dollar each, it's selling newspaper B for a buck twenty-five each. They tell us that um, R percent of the revenue comes from newspaper A, and they tell us that P percent of the copies of newspapers sold are copies of A. They don't tell us that in this order, they tell it in this order, which is a little bit more confusing. Anyway, so rather than do the algebra on this, which is pretty brutal, and if you look in the back of the official guide, they essentially take like an entire page to solve it with algebra, which is always a bad sign. Um, I'm just going to pick some numbers. So you might spend a little while fiddling around with like what are the best numbers to pick. They might be like, I want to make it something easy. Um, so this one's kind of hard to, to pick numbers, but I would say since newspaper B is sold for a buck twenty-five each, I want to make I want to sell some multiple of four copies of that. Right? That's going to make it five bucks. You see what I'm saying? I don't want this decimal here. So uh, here's how I would organize this. Let's say you know copies copies of A and B, uh, and then revenue from A and B, right? So if I want to sell, if I want to make a nice round number, uh, I'm going to sell four copies of B. Let's just pretend we picked the day uh, four because it's going to be a nice number, right? And I'm going to say that A, they also sold four copies of A because hopefully that'll be, you know, easy to deal with. I've got a 50-50 relationship here. So if I sold four copies of A, then I made four dollars. Uh, from A, and I made five dollars from B. Cool. So um, they ask what percent of the revenue comes from A. Well, now we've got some numbers that we can deal with. Okay. So what percent comes from A? Well, I've got four dollars from A, five from B. So I'm going to say four ninths of the revenue comes from A. However, this needs to be in percent, so I'm going to multiply this by hundred. So in other words, it's going to be four hundred over nine. That gives us a percent. So this here is what's called the target. Essentially, if I plug in whatever P is into these, whichever one spits out 400 over 9 should be the correct answer. Now, what is P? Well, it's 50%, right? So P percent means that you know P needs to be 50. So I'm going to say P equals 50. I'm going to plug in 50 into each of these and then see which one spits out a 400 over 9. Now, in my experience, anytime there's variables in the answer choices, about 80% 80, 80 of the answers are D or E. Because what they want is they want you to go through every single one of these and then not get the right answer until you hit D or E. So in general, I would recommend that you start at E and work your way up and you'll probably hit it right off the bat. I'm going to do it the other way though, just to show you what I'm doing. Okay? So I'm going to plug in 50 into each of these and then see what happens. There, give myself some space. So A should be 100 times 50 over 125 minus 50, which gives me 75. Now, I know that there's some reducing happening. I'm not actually going to reduce it because I can see that 75, I'm not going to be able to reduce that into a 9, right? 75 just has a 3, and I need two 3s. I mean, as factors, right? So this is not it. Uh, for B, I'll plug in this, and I'm not going to multiply 150 times 50. I'm not going to multiply it out. I'll just leave it this way while I do extra math. 250 minus 50 equals 200. And when I reduce everything here, I know that this isn't going to turn into a 9 because there's no 3s anywhere in there as factors, right? So working our way down the list, 300 times 50 uh, over 375 minus 50, that gets me 325. That looks kind of like a little bit more hopeful, but if you use your divisibility rules, like I want to know whether this is divisible by 9. So if I add the digits, 3 plus 2 plus 5, I get 10. And since they don't add up to a multiple of 9, I know that this is not divisible by 9, which means that this is not the answer either. Okay? Let's try D. Got a good feeling about D. 400 times 50, I'll write that in. 500 minus 50 gets me 450. But ow, that looks good. Okay, because 450 does have a 9 in it, right? Because 9 times 5 is 45. So this one looks pretty good. I'll pause on this. Let's look at this just, in, just uh, to be sure. 
because you know I could reduce all this stuff or I can just look at this and if this isn't it then this must be it. Anyway, so this E is 500 times 50 over 625 minus 50 which gets me 575. Again, I know that this doesn't have a 9 in it because it's not divisible by 9, right? 5 plus 5 plus 7 gets me 17. 17 is not a multiple of 9. So this is out. Out, 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 out. It must be this. Let's just double check. I see, I'm going to cancel everything, right? I see a 0 here and a 0 here. Uh, I see a 5 here and a 45. If I divide by 5 on the top and the bottom, this turns into a 9. And look, I've got 400 over 9. So that's the answer.